everyone. It's me with my cat, Ellie. Ellie has been watching me get ready for Sunday school and she keeps meowing and maybe she'll meow some more, but she's been very busy and very excited to join us for Sunday school today, right? Maybe not. Let's hope she gets, she behaves now. We'll see. Anyway, I wanted to welcome you to Sunday School today. It's wonderful to see you again. I hope you had a wonderful week. So today we're going to start off right away with our welcome song. So everybody, crisscross applesauce, sit down, cross those legs, and we'll start our song. Okay, here we go. God loves me. God loves me. God loves everyone and God loves me. God loves Connolly and Celeste and Henry and Evan and Wyatt and Miles and Carolyn and Adelaide and Charlotte. Welcome back. And any other friends who are watching. God loves Connolly and Celeste and Henry and Evan and Wyatt and Miles and Caroline and Adelaide and Charlotte and anyone else who's watching. God loves everyone and God loves Connolly and Celeste and Henry and Evan and Wyatt and Miles and Caroline and Adelaide and Charlotte and all of our friends. God loves our families. God loves our families. God loves everyone and God loves our families. God loves Dr. Coles. God loves Dr. Coles. God loves everyone and God loves Dr. Coles. All right. Yay. So today we're going to talk about praying and the Lord's Prayer. How many of you pray? Have you ever prayed? Say a prayer maybe before you have a dinner or a breakfast or maybe before you go to bed. Yeah, well, we're, we're going to talk about that today. And uh, we're going to learn how Jesus told us how to pray. Because when Jesus would be talking to people, all these people from all over came. He would have old people and moms and dads and young children. They would come to hear Jesus speak. And you would have happy people and kind of sad people and healthy people and sometimes sick people, they would all want to come and, and hear what news and what ideas and all the stories about God that Jesus was sharing. And even the disciples liked to hear Jesus talk. Remember when we talked about the 12 disciples? We're going to sing Dr. Drum songs. Uh, we're going to sing a song with Dr. Drum later about the fishers of people that we sang ourselves last time. But we have the 12 disciples and they enjoyed listening to Jesus. And they wanted to know and they wanted to learn how to pray. So Jesus told them. And Jesus said, we can keep our prayers simple. We don't have to use big fancy words or say things in loud voices. In fact, Jesus said we shouldn't try to show off when we're praying. We shouldn't stand and say, look at me, I'm so good, I pray. That's precisely what Jesus said we shouldn't do. Jesus said we need to find a time where we can spend some time by ourselves, maybe, or just with our family and pray quietly and think about things. And Jesus said, and I can teach you how to pray. And he taught us the Lord's Prayer. And today we say our Lord's Prayer in church. And people say it in churches all over the world. And so today, I bet you might know it, or I know you might have heard it, but we're going to learn the Lord's Prayer today. And we're going to learn what it means, okay? So, Jesus said, you can pray be by beginning with these words. Our Father who art in heaven. Can you say that? Our Father who art in heaven. That's like saying our dad who is in heaven. And what Jesus was saying is that, you know, we have dads who love us very much. Some of us have dads who love us very much. Some of us have mothers 
Maybe we don't have dads, but we have mothers who love us so much. Or we have grandparents. Or we have just special people in our lives who love us so, so much. And Jesus said, we can pray to God like we can pray to those people who love us. Here, do this. Give yourself a hug and shut your eyes. And then think about someone who really, really loves you. It might be a mommy or a daddy or a grandma and grandpa. Think about that person. Now open your eyes. How does that make you feel? It makes you feel happy, right? It makes you feel loved. And you know what? No matter how much that person loves you, God loves you even more. God loves you so, 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 so much. And he wants you to be able to sit and, and talk to him in prayer. So that's what it means. Our Father who art in heaven. We are praying to God, to someone who loves us so much. Now, the next line that we say is, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Can you say that? Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed. That's kind of a crazy name, isn't it? That's a funny sounding word. But what hallowed means is holy. And we talked about holy as a sign of something special. We talked about the Holy Spirit when we talked about Jesus being baptized with the dove coming from heaven. The sign of God's love, the sign of something so special. And so we say, this so special is your name because God wants us to talk to him and to respect God. And you don't like it if somebody makes fun of your name or someone talks in a bad way about you. Well, God doesn't want us to talk in a bad way toward God. So we need to talk to God because God is holy. God is special. Okay? So we've learned two things. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Here is the next word. Thy kingdom come, you can say that, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven, on earth as it is in heaven. Well, those are, that's a lot of words, but we're talking about earth and heaven. Here is a beautiful beautiful picture of our earth, which is really quite beautiful, quite magical and wonderful. This was taken from the space shuttle out in outer space by the astronauts. Isn't our world beautiful? And right under the clouds over there is where we live. Isn't that crazy? Well, what we're doing is we're asking God to help us do what God would do to help make this world a better place, to help make this world more like heaven. We, we can't be heaven, but we can try to treat things in this world as God wants us to treat the world. How do you think, what do you think the world would look like if we all tried to act in this world and treat the world in the way that God wants the world to be? Do you think God would want to see all of this pollution on our shores and in our waters and in our rivers and on our land? Mm, probably not. Why not? We're not taking care of God's earth when we have that. How about, hmm, if we look at earth, God looks down, would, would God want to see us fighting with one another all the time? I don't think so. What does God want us to do? God wants us to love one another, right? So do you think maybe hmm, that God would want to see people who are hungry with no food? 
Is that how he wants us, the earth, to be? Is that what we would be in heaven? No. We want people to have food. It's in this part of the prayer that we are asking God to help use us, to help us make the earth the way God imagines it to be. How can God help us do good things with the beautiful earth that God has created? Okay, so we've learned our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven hard to memorize all of that but you can even go back and listen to this video or you can learn it with your mom or, or with your dad or a guardian or someone well the next phrase is sounds pretty easy it says give us this day our daily bread we know what bread looks like right so let's say that give us this day our daily bread give us this day our daily bread well at the time when Jesus was on earth over 2,000 years ago, bread had a slightly different meaning. It wasn't just sliced bread like we might have today. Bread was like a sign or a symbol. You know, we talked about signs like the dove and, and different signs over the past couple weeks. And it's a sign of something that we truly need in order to live. So we need bread. The people at the time needed bread, needed that food to eat. And so what we're doing in this is that we're asking God to make sure that we have the things that we need to live. Give us this day our daily bread. Now it gets a little tricky because we have to make a difference be or a distinction. We have to decide, is this something that we need or is this something that we want? You may pray for Play-Doh. Maybe your Play-Doh dried up. Play-Doh is fun, but is that something that we need to live? No. That's something that we might like a lot and, but, and we want, but it's not something that we need. Let's think of something that we might need. We might need things like a house or an apartment or some sort of shelter, something to help protect us from the wind and the rain and the snow or the heat. So we need shelter to live, right? We can't live out there in the world with nothing that can help protect us. That's hard to live that way. What else might we need? Hmm. Might we need, oh, we need fun games, right? No, that's a want too. I like Candyland, but that might be something we want or another fun toy. That's not something we need. What we might need in this world is healthy food to eat, right? That's something that people need, if, especially if you're a child and you want to grow strong. You need food. Let's see, what else might we need or want? Give us this day our daily bread. Oh, I know, chocolate and candy, right? No, sometimes I say I really need chocolate. I love chocolate. But that's really something I want. It's not something that's going to help me grow strong and healthy. No, what we might really need and many people need in the world is water, clean water. You know, you and I, we can probably just go in the kitchen and turn on the faucet and put a glass and get our drink of water or go to our refrigerator and get water from that. Easy peasy. But for many, many, many children in the world, they have to walk miles and miles in order to get some clean water to drink. And you know, we need things to drink like clean water to grow. So that's something that this world needs. So we have to, when we're praying, think of 
Please, Lord, help grant us the things that we truly need. And we can thank God for those things, for giving us. Be thankful for the shelter and the healthy food and the water that we have. And pray that others might receive this type of daily bread, these needs that they need in order to grow big and strong. Okay, so now in the prayer we've learned, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And here's the next line. And forgive us our trespasses. Can you say that? And forgive us our trespasses. And the next line is, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Ready? As we forgive those who trespass against us. Oh my goodness. Those are some big words. Trespass. That sounds kind of funny too as a word, doesn't it? Well, where have we seen that word before? Well, sometimes you might see this sign on a house that says private property, no trespassing. That means someone owns that house and we're not supposed to go inside. So if I want to, should I just go in, maybe break open the door or break open the window and walk right in and go and take a glass of milk and go and sit on the couch and turn on the TV? No, <laughs> that wouldn't be the right thing to do, right? A trespass, when we trespass against something, we're doing something that's wrong. That's something that's hurtful toward them. I wouldn't be respecting their house. I would be not doing good things, right? So forgive us our trespasses. So, we don't always do crazy things like that, but maybe we do little things. Like maybe we get really angry at our little brother and we might push him or something or with our sister. And that's not nice either, is it? We're not perfect, but God wants us to think about that. And we need to forgive us our trespasses. Please, please help us forgive us. You know, help us start all over again so we can maybe learn not to do that next time. But here's the trickier part. And by the way, God forgives us our trespasses because God loves us so much. And the tricky part of this is that it says, as we forgive those who trespass against us. What? I'm supposed to give forgive and be nice to somebody who's mean to me? No way. But yes way, that's what God wants us to do. God wants us to say, okay, I love you. I forgive you. Just as he loves us and forgives us. That is not easy to do, is it? We might be really, really, really mad at somebody for doing something to us. And you know, God's probably mad at that person too. But at the same time, God wants us to forgive that person. Wow. That's part of the prayer of the Lord's Prayer that we say. <sighs> We've talked a lot about prayer, haven't we? We've talked a lot. Maybe we need to take a little break. Why don't you stand up? Ready? And let's reach up to the sky. And then let's go touch our toes. Wait, where did you go? Oh, reach up to the sky and touch your toes. One more time. Reach up to the sky and put your hands on your hips. Now let's just turn around in a circle. Oh, that's a long time to sit, isn't it? Whew. But guess what? We're almost done learning. Ready? So just three more phrases from the Lord's Prayer. And some of them are kind of fun. I like them. Okay. So we've learned all those different words from the Lord's Prayer. And the next part is this. Another big word is coming up. 
and lead us not into temptation. Can you repeat after me? And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. But deliver us from evil. Okay. So temptation is a big word and it can mean a lot of things. And temptation is really when you want to do something that you know is wrong. You, it's the feeling, the feeling you have when you want to do something that's wrong. We don't want to be tempted. Your mom and dad might say, or dad or grandma and grandpa might say, don't take any cookies before dinner. You'll spoil your appetite. And you might be tempted. You might want to do that even if you're not supposed to. We also say you don't want to be tempted to steal money. That's not good, right? You don't want to steal money that we have in the house or anybody's money. So we don't want to be tempted that says, lead us not into temptation. And it also says, but deliver us from evil. Because we are not only asking us God to help us not be tempted, but we don't want to have other people do bad things to us. We don't want other people to steal our money or our cookies or disobey rules or things like that. Otherwise, we might feel pretty sad, right? So lead us not into, te lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. So God wants to both keep us from doing the wrong thing as well as protecting us from the wrong things that other people might do. Okay? Now the next one is kind of a special phrase. For thine is the kingdom, like a king, a kingdom. Can you say that? For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory. Can you say that? the power and the glory forever and ever. So for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. What does that mean? It's to remind us that everything in this beautiful world, even ourselves, is a gift from God. Even the things things we think we really own, that's it's all gifts from God. And this world is beautiful. It is glorious. It is powerful and wonderful. And in telling God that we know that all the good things that come from the world, we know that they come from God and we're making a promise to God to take care of those gifts right? If you're given a gift, you want to take care of that gift. What are ways we might do that? Let's think about it. Let's, let, let's put our heads together and think, hmm, well, if we are a gift from God, we need to take care of ourselves, right? We need to eat the right food and be kind and gentle as even if sometimes we do things and we get upset with ourselves, we need to learn to love ourselves. We could make sure that we don't waste water and keep our planet clean and beautiful. We can pick up litter and recycle. We can share with a new person at school who might be new and not know what's going on. We can tell our mom and dad or, or tell our mom or tell our dad or our grandparents that we love them. We can save up our money and give it to the poor like we did this last time. These are all good examples of how we can remember that we need to be doing good with the good gifts that God has given us, to take care of what God has given us. Okay? So now we're at the end. And you know what we say at the end? Amen or Amen. Some people say Amen. Some people say Amen. And what that means is it means so be it. When we say Amen or Amen, what we're saying is that, you know what we've prayed? We really mean it. 
it's a sort of a way of saying we promise to do the things we said we would in this prayer. Amen. That's a good thing. It's a good word too. There's a song I like to sing. The words are really tricky. It's amen. That's all you need to know. Ready? Here's the song. Only I'm going to say amen. 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 Can you do that now? Let's stand up and let's be ready to sing. Remember the words are pretty easy. Amen. 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 All right. Amen is a good thing. So let us say the Lord's Prayer. Ready? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and glory forever and ever. Amen. Yay. You'll have to practice that maybe with your mom or maybe a friend or maybe a grandparent or a dad. You can practice, okay? And you'll hear that song in church every single Sunday. So it's a good prayer to learn. So let's say our own prayer now. Remember, it just needs to come from the heart. I'll say some words and then I want you to think about what you want to pray to God. So here is my prayer. Dear God, thank you for teaching us about praying. Thank you for teaching us the Lord's Prayer. Thank you for caring so much and loving us so much. Now you think of something that you want to pray for. Ready? You say it. And then we can end it by saying, Amen. All right. That's our lesson. Now, a couple more things in a little bit before Dr. Drum sings his songs. And you'll remember those songs that he's singing. It's really fun. Two things. One, just know that I have a little coloring page for you that you can um, have your parents download and then you can color that. The other thing is I just wanted to mention something very, very important because just this past week, we celebrated a very special holiday. Do you know what it was? It wasn't the inauguration. That was pretty special too when we elect a president every four years. But this was the holiday for Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Who was he? Well, Dr. Martin Luther King, he was a very well-known pastor or minister, you know, a pastor like, Doc, or like Pastor Solberg. And he was very smart and very, very wise. And people listened to him. And you can see all the people are here listening to him. He always had a lot of people come to him. And he was especially important because Dr. King reminded people that God commands us to love one another. No matter what we look like, no matter what color our skin is, we need to celebrate us and love us and love our neighbors and love everyone. That's a really, really, really powerful message. And Dr. King was a really good speaker. And he would talk about things like we talk about in Sunday school and church. He would talk about forgiveness, like in the Lord's Prayer. He talked about people treating people nicely and serving people, serving the poor and doing justice, making sure that we do the right things. That's really important. And especially about loving one another and accepting everybody for who they are. 
Dr. King also had a really nice saying about prayer. He said, Dr. King said, that to be a Christian, to be somebody like us who believes in Jesus and God, to be a Christian without prayer is no more possible than to be alive without breathing. What does that mean? Can we be alive if we're not breathing? No. What Dr. King said is it's hard to be, you can't really be a Christian, somebody who believes in Jesus without praying. Because when we pray, we're constantly reminded of the gifts that God has given us. We're constantly reminded how we need to do better in this world. We're constantly reminded how we need to love one another, no matter who we are, to forgive people and, and to truly love God. See, I told you he was a pretty wise man. And that's why we're celebrating him with a very special holiday here in the United States uh, for a holiday in which we remember Dr. Martin Luther King. So remember his message about loving one another and especially about also his message that relates to what we talked about today, his message about prayer. To be a Christian, we need to pray. Okay? I will see you next week and you can now enjoy some fun songs with Dr. Drum. I'll see you later, okay? Bye. Good morning, boys and girls. It's another Sunday morning and time for some more songs. Today we're going to sing two songs. The first is called Fishers of People, and the second is the B I B L E, which I know you know. Now, the first one, Fishers of People, and some of you may remember it's called Fishers of Men, but we call it Fishers of People now. And it's when Jesus called his disciples, and they were all fishermen, and he said, If you follow me, I will make you fishers of people. So, here we go. I will make you fishers of people, fishers of people, fishers of people. I will make you fishers of people if you follow me. You know the word. Here we go. I will make you fishers of people, fishers of people, fishers of people. I will make you fishers of people if you follow me. If you follow me, if you follow me, oh, I will make you fishers of people if you follow me. <clears throat> very, very good singing. Let's try it again. <clears throat> I will make you fishers of people. Fishers of people, fishers of people, I will make you fishers of people if you follow me. If you follow me, if you follow me, I will make you fishers of people if you follow me. The next one, very good scene, by the way. The next one is the B-I-B-L-E. And I know you all remember this one. The words are very easy. We spell out Bible. The B-I-B-L-E is that's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God. The B-I-B-L-E. So let's try it. Ready? The B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the Word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. Very, very good singing once again. The B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the Word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. Very, very good singing. Thank you very much, and I have a good Sunday school lesson today. Because remember, God loves you. Bye-bye now.